to the entertaining Talking Sports. What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. Hope everybody's staying safe out there. And this is a video that I've been wanting to do for a while. I uh, spent a lot of time yesterday doing a lot of research, and I analyzed the NFL draft from 2013 to 2017 under Jerry Reese. The reason being, well, I kind of wanted to do a refresher for myself as well as demonstrate why I think the New York Giants are in the situation they're in, or at least a big reason for it. Now, am I saying that Dave Gettleman is completely, you know, void of blame? No, he's done some silly things, but I wanted to go over just how bad of a situation that Dave Gettleman and Pat Shermer were put in when they took over the job. Um, and it is ugly when you go back and look at these drafts. I even went back as, as uh, far back as 2011, um, but the, the statistical data that I did for all 32 teams will be between the 2013 and 2017 draft. And we say it all the time. Every NFL GM and owner says it all the time. You win, you build through the draft. You win through the draft. Of course, you fill in holes via free agency, but you look at the best teams in the league. The Pittsburgh Steelers never spend in free agency. The Patriots, they spend when they need to, but for the most part, they built through the draft. Most good teams built through the draft. Now, the Patriots, what's ironic in this study, I thought they were going to be one of the better teams. They were one of the worst, and the only logical conclusion I could come up with was the fact that they probably had some picks taken away from them due to Spygate. I don't remember how many they had taken away from them, but I think it was a decent amount, um, and my guess is that had something to do with it, but they did not draft particularly well um, over this stretch. As a matter of fact, they drafted pretty horribly. Um, now, some of the... Um, the factors that I used when analyzing all 32 teams, I went over Pro Bowlers. I even, in parentheses, show you guys who was drafted in the second round or later. I also went over uh, players that were drafted by that team and are still playing for that team, and players drafted by that team who are still playing in the league. I then ranked the teams 1-32 to 32 in terms of percentage because, of course, some teams have more picks than others. The San Francisco 49ers, for example, had 54 picks um, over that five-year stretch. You know, uh, on, on the opposite end of the spectrum, the Carolina Panthers only had 28. So it's only fair to go by uh, percentages when judging the effectiveness with these picks, at least in my opinion. Um, and some of the, some of it was a little bit surprising, uh, you know, in, in terms of Jerry Reese. Some of it was better than I thought it would be, but most of it was right around where I thought it would have been. And that would be not very good when you look at some of the drafts that Jerry Reese had. It is not pretty, and we're going to jump into that first. We're going to go over some of the players he has drafted over the last, uh, over his last seven years of his career, and of course, this kind of set up the 2016 offseason, which put the New York Giants in cap hell because of how poorly Reese had drafted. Even that year that they won the Super Bowl, we're going to go all the way back to 11 and show that draft. But because they had no depth on this team, and because they were not, they weren't able to play, uh, pay players an affordable rate because they they weren't able to draft good players. They had to overspend in free agents. And that put them in cap hell for when Dave Gettleman and Pat Shermer took over for the New York Giants. And like I said, Dave Gettleman is not completely, you know, innocent in this case. But I just want to point out the fact that he's only been here for two years. And when you look at the situation that this guy had to inherit, it was not pretty. And I don't think a lot of GMs would have done a very good job given the situation that he was given. And we're going to jump into it right now and show you guys and also factor in the limited cap space that was provided to him in 2018 and the New York Giants, which is why I continue to say we have to be patient. And if it's not Gettleman, that's fine, but we have to be patient with the rebuild. This is not going to be fixed in one year or two years when you look at how poor it's been for the last seven. But let's jump into some of these drafts by Jerry Reese and some of the misses that he's had. The first thing we'll pull up is the 2011 draft. This being the year that they won the Super Bowl, Prince Mukamore was a decent contributor, probably not worth that 19th overall selection. Marvin Austin, Jarrell Jernigan, James Brewer, Greg Jones, Tyler Shash, Williams, and Darrell Scott. None of those guys is really much of a contributor for the New York Giants, and for the most part, they were wasted draft picks. Um, even Mukamore, like I said, was probably not worthy of the 19th overall selection. I didn't pull up the draft and look at other players that they could have potentially drafted. But at a bare, you know, at, at best, if you're being an optimistic Giant fan, you could say maybe he, it was a satisfactory pick in the first round. The next draft, the 2012, David Wilson, Jerry Reese got some bad luck there. Of course, David Wilson showed some promise there, but you could certainly argue that he should have been taking tackles at this point in time with the aging offensive line. Instead, he elects to take a running back. Um, Wilson goes down with an injury. Ruben Randall was at best a mediocre wide receiver. Hosley, Adrian Robinson, Brandon Mosley, Matt McCants, and Marcus Kuhn. Nothing to write home about with this draft either. The next draft is going to be the first draft that I analyzed uh, with the data because, like I said, it was from 2013 to 2017. Wanted to give you guys a good five-year sample size, but I want to show you all the picks for the Giants before I do it. Justin Pugh, again, 
at best, a satisfactory pick at number 19 overall. Jonathan Hankins was a solid pick. Demontre Moore, Ryan Nassib, Cooper Taylor, Eric Herman, and Michael Cox. Nothing there. Once again, in my opinion, a disappointing draft. No doubt about it. A bad draft by Jerry Reese. The next draft we're going to pull up, the 2014 draft, Odell Beckham. This is the pick that saved Jerry Reese's job. And you're going to see, I'm going to go over all the picks and say it's bad, but you st- stick around till we do the statistical analysis of comparing it to all of the 32 teams to show you just how bad it was. Weston Richburg was the second pick. Solid pick there at number 43. Jay Bromley, Andre Williams. Devon, uh, Kennard was solid. He's still in the league. And Bennett Jackson. Um, I, I, that's a good draft because you got Odell Beckham. But outside of that, nothing really to write home about. The next draft, Eric Flowers, one of the worst picks in New York Giants history at number nine overall, a complete bust at the tackle position. Landon Collins, by value, was probably Jerry Reese's best pick over this seven-year stretch. An early second-round pick was good, but he's no longer with the New York Giants. The Giants had two Pro Bowlers over the five-year stretch and even over the seven-year stretch of this video. So in the last seven drafts for Jerry Reese, he only drafted two Pro Bowlers, one being Landon Collins, the other being Odell Beckham, neither of which is still with the team. Double O, Mikel Thompson, Jeremy Davis, who's still in the league, Bobby Hart, who's still in the league, neither of which has much of an impact in the NFL, but Bobby Hart, for his seventh round pick, was solid value. Next draft, Eli Apple, horrible pick. He's already off the team. You know, he was drafted, what, four or five years ago, already off the team. Sterling Shepard, solid pick for number 40 overall. He's had concussion problems, but you can't get on Reese for that. Darian Thompson, B.J. Goodson, Paul Perkins, Darrell Adams. Bad picks. Goodson barely played for the Giants. He was constantly hurt. Was solid at times. They traded him, I think, last year for like a fifth or a sixth round pick uh, to the Green Bay Packers. And then finally, the last trip we're going to analyze, you got Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram is definitely a solid pro, but we say, I say it all the time. They should have elected to go somewhere else there. Uh, offensive lineman Ramsick, for example. Um, they could have went a lot of ways there. Uh, a, a, a tight end that can't block was not the way they should have went. And you look at how poor the offensive line has been. Well, look how he ignored it. And when he did try to, uh, um, you know, fix it, he missed with the picks. Dalvin Tomlinson, definitely a good pick there at number 55. One of his better value picks um, for sure. Davis Webb off the team, a third round pick. Wayne Gallman still on the team. Not very good. Avery Moss and Adam Biznotaway. So, there's the picks. Now let's jump into the analyzation. Let's see where the New York Giants rate uh, when, I, when I compared them to all the other teams in the NFL. The first thing we're going to look at is, I'm just going to, like I said earlier, I'm going to show you guys the two drafted Pro Bowlers over that stretch from 2013 to 2017. Like I said earlier, of course, Odell Beckham saved Jerry Reese's job. That was by far his best player that he drafted over this stretch. And Landon Collins was his only Pro Bowler outside of the first round in the last seven years of his career, um, and he, he might as well have been a first-round pick. He was the first pick in the second round. Um, so it really goes to show you, when you look at some of these other teams, now I didn't pull up all the names because that would have taken forever, but there were a lot of teams that found Pro Bowlers in the third, the fourth round. The Chiefs, for example, Tyree Kill, um, and there were a number of others. The Giants found none of those over the last seven years of Jer- uh, Jerry Reese's career. Um, and like I said earlier, both these guys are now off the team. The New, York, the New York Giants as a whole drafted 32 players over this five-year stretch. Only four still remain with the team, three of which were in the 2017 draft just three years ago, um, the other being Sterling Shepard from the 2016 draft. But those are the four players. Wayne Gallman, who might not even make the team this year, uh, being that the New York Giants went out there, they pick up a leak on the undrafted free agent, they sign Deion Lewis, so he's not even a lock to be on the team. Dalvin Tomlinson, Evan Ingram, and Sterling Shepard, of course, will be on the team. Um, the, the New York Giants extended Ingram on his rookie deal. We'll have to wait and see what they do with Dalvin Tomlinson. I think it'll be a decision between him and Leonard Williams going forward. And Sterling Shepard is a solid player when he's on the football field. So those three, I think at least two of them, will be part of the future for the New York Giants, obviously, if they could remain healthy. But that is all that remains over these five drafts. Now, let's see how they stack up compared to other teams. The first thing I did, and this is the good news for Jerry Reese. Now, of course, a lot of those players, as you saw, as you saw we just went over all 32 players. None of them are headliners, but a lot of them have been able to stay in the league as special teamers, as backups, things like that. Percent still in the league that were drafted between 2013 to 2017. The best team in the league. Well, guys, I don't know if you know this. Dave Gettleman was the general manager for those years, from 2013 to 2017, that five-year stretch for the Carolina Panthers. He had the best percentage out of every team in the league. 
21 out of his 28 players that he drafted are still in the league, a 75% hit rate. The Saints are second at 70%. Um, and the Lions actually had a lot of good picks throughout this um, five-year stretch as well. The Saints right now, in my opinion, have been the most consistent team in the league, and you're going to see it's going to be a common theme with the Saints. Of course, the Panthers, when Gettleman was there, they got a record of like 53-21, and 21, something ridiculous. And we know as Giants fans, he's shown the ability to draft. Well, we questioned some other things in terms of free agency. But Jerry Reese and the New York Giants ranked seventh here, and they're kind of tied with fifth and sixth. I ranked them seventh because they did it with fewer picks. Um, I figured it was more challenging to have that 59% grade with more picks. But regardless... They ranked in the top 10 in the league in players that are still in the NFL uh, in terms of percentage from 2013 to 2017 at number 7. The rest of the list, if you look at the bottom, surprisingly, the Steelers and the Seahawks rank all the way at the bottom at 41% and 39%. A common theme you're going to see with the Jets and Bills, they drafted atrocious over this time period. Uh, the Bills, I think, had one Pro Bowler. There was only one team with zero, and that was the Denver Broncos. But you'll notice the Jets and the Bills will be at the bottom of the list in the next two categories, along with the New York Giants. The next one we're going to pull up is percent still on the team drafted 2013 to 2017. And much like the last one, the New Orleans Saints are all the way at the top again. Look at that. 44% of the players that they drafted over this five-year stretch, and you're going back eight years to 2013 for some of these picks, are still on the roster. 12 out of their 53 players were drafted over this five-year stretch. That's pretty incredible, um, You know, especially factoring in that they've had three drafts since, free agency, things like that. The Chargers are the second best. They are 10% less at 34%. You look at the New York Giants. They're in blue. I highlighted them. They're all the way down at 30 Four out of 32 for a 13% hit rate for Jerry Reese over that stretch. Like I said, the Jets and the Bills, um, you'll see, are in the bottom five or six in every statistical category. The Jets at 15%, the Bills at 8%. Um, In terms of the teams at the top, we'll go back there real quick. The Saints definitely have had success due in large part to this draft period. The Chargers, the Bears, the Bears have built a very good defense. The problem there has been the quarterback. But they've built a good defense. The Falcons went on a Super Bowl run, due in large part to how well they drafted. And you'll really see that hit home when we get to the Pro Bowlers. The Cowboys, we all know, have drafted very well over this stretch. Um, The Panthers, yet again, Dave Gettleman. Dave Gettleman had a 29% um, rate there in in players that are still on the team with the Carolina Panthers while he was there as the GM. 8 out of 28 remain on the roster. That is the 6th best ratio out of every team in this league. And he was number 1. Um, in the previous one. So, Gettleman did a very good job of drafting there with the uh, Carolina Panthers. The Bengals, surprisingly, at number 8. The Rams, uh, you know, fill out the top 10. The Patriots is a team that really confused me. Um, Like I I, I think I said at the beginning of the video, I think that may be in large part due to the fact that they had a lot of picks taken away from them with the Spygate and everything else. They ranked 26th, only 6 out of 40, for a rate of 15%. Um for the New England Patriots. But finally, the last thing I wanted to pull up for you guys was the Pro Bowlers drafted from 2013 to 2017. Now, I didn't go just by the number. I went by the percentage. I thought that was the fairest thing, being that some teams had a lot more picks than others. The Chiefs, incredible. 38 picks, nine of them made the Pro Bowl. Four were drafted in the first round. So they had five picks, second round or later, that made the Pro Bowl over this five-year stretch. That's one per draft on average. That is insane to be able to find that. The Chiefs uh, drafted phenomenally, and of course they won the Super Bowl this past year. Yet again, the Bears. Now the Bears, if I'm being fair, Trubisky was on that list. Tariq Cohen was on that list. There was a couple of you know players that, eh, But they definitely drafted well. They had eight Pro Bowlers, three in the first, five in the second round or later. They were tied with the Chiefs in terms of percentage. The Falcons ranked third. Like I said, the Falcons went on a Super Bowl run. The Saints again. The Saints were fourth or better in all three categories. Of course, the Saints, like I said, one of the more consistent teams. The Ravens were fifth. Um, as they had uh, seven Pro Bowlers, three in the first round for a hit rate of 15%. You'll notice a common theme. All those teams, for the most part, have been competitive over this stretch. The Vikings, the Cowboys, the Packers, the Chargers round out the top nine. The Bucs, fairly questionable. The Steelers at 11. Um, And then if you look at the bottom, the New York Giants ranked in at number 24. The Niners did horribly over this stretch when you look at the numbers, but over the last three years, they've started to right the ship. 
They only had three Pro Bowlers out of 54 picks for a hit rate of 6%. The Giants, like I said earlier, had two and only one in the second round or later. The Broncos were the only team with zero Pro Bowlers out of 38 picks. The Bengals, the Patriots, yet again, only had one. That was Jamie Collins. So that is kind of the outlier here. But for the most part, you'll notice a lot of teams at the bottom didn't do so well. The other thing you got to take into account, the teams that are bad should be doing very well because they get higher picks usually, right? A team like the Browns, the Bengals, they should be getting higher picks. And even with that advantage, they were not able to pull off a better rating. So I kind of wanted to just go over all that with you guys, just some statistical evidence that I was able to find regarding Jerry Reese and the New York Giants over 2013 to 2017 and how it set up the New York Giants and Dave Gettleman for the to- a horrible situation he inherited. Now, is Gettleman safe of his job? No. If the Giants have a bad year, there's a very good chance he will be relieved of duty. But I think it's best to look at history sometimes and really realize the situation he took on. I mean, you look at some of those players that were drafted over the previous seven drafts and the cap space that was allotted to them, and the fact that I believe at least Mara forced Eli Manning on him, it was not the e- easiest of situations. And the only thing I'll say to, to this is I believe Gettleman has done a better job, not that he could have done much worse than what Reese did over the, his last seven years as the New York Giants GM in terms of drafting. If they do move on, at least Gettleman and the New York has set the New York Giants up for some bright young pieces with this New York Giants team as they've started to right the ship in terms of drafting and creating some cap space. As always, guys, if you liked what you watched, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.